first version of Artbot was um, a chainsaw that was attached to um, a you know almost nine foot robot, and you had these children as young as uh, you know ten years old using a chainsaw at the end of a robot, and it also had haptic and tactile feedback to kind of transmit the uh, touch of the tool. Okay, so basically what you've got here are the three arms, and here you have the control arm, the one that gets manipulated by an instructor, for example. But when the instructor is moving the instructor's arm, it moves the tool arm, which then performs the operation onto the materials, and sends back the sensations to the student so that they can feel what's going on at the same time. And so the instructor has a control arm and that arm guides the making process and moves through a sculpting experience so that the communication can occur not only from the instructor uh, to the student about how what sort of gestures work and you know how to kind of use a tool how to make something from beginning to end but also the material feedback um, that is to say the resistance and um, the vibration and the breakdowns of the material the different material events that are happening are communicated back to both the instructor and the student um, simultaneously so what that does is it allows for the sculpting of an object using machine-assisted robotics. At the same time, the student's arm can experience the haptic and tactile force feedback. Start to It can be really hard for a sculpting instructor to let the students know um, how to touch something. I mean, I can tell you how to touch something, or I can show you a video or a diagram, or there's, there's lots of different ways of codifying and attempting to transfer the meaning of a message, uh, you know, through these mediated apparatus. But it's hard for me to just tell you, you know, the tactile touch experience. But if I could hold your hand, if I could guide you, through the process of making something, you know, step by step, then there's a kind of a tra tactile transference that occurs um, where I can transmit my touch knowledge, that tacit understanding, um, to you in a kind of a um, communication of touch. What did it feel like? Um, it, especially with the drill part, it, it felt like I was holding the drill. Um, I had that sensation of when you drill something, the drill was working. It's like a vibration and um, a tingle. I guess sensation, not current, but um, movement. You know, I kind of felt like my finger was more like the wood, like the, the drill was hitting me. A uh, wonderful thing is happening with technology right now where we have rapid prototyping machines capable of helping us to produce objects that we sort of sculpt in a virtual space, if you will, or a simulated computer environment. But I think that there's a happier marriage to be had if we can combine the human elements of um, ingenuity and creativity and the ability to react to unpredictable circumstances in a positive way and kind of sculpt our way to a final object. Uh, kind of comical. Um, it's just 
like strange, but it was fun. Uh, it, well, it was not like a current, but it was uh, like many small things rubbing together. And uh, you can really feel the tactility of not just the movement, but also the texture of what you had put on the wood. Kind of like cool. in, in like video games where you can sometimes like you can feel it vibrating, but this felt yeah. a little more, a little less external, I guess. This felt more like inside. What's really exciting about this research is that eventually what could happen is there could be a kind of a touch record um, that exists over a longer period of time. You know, you use the machines and the uh, robots interact with the materials and there's this kind of haptic tactile feedback database which gets built out and you can then take all that information and give it to a artificially intelligent rendering uh, engine which will be able to uh, assist us in the making of things. So we'll use machine um, learning as well as uh, you know kind of a reinforced machine learning as well as human interaction um, both with the materials, the machines and the human uh, participant in this kind of cycle of cogenerative um, creativity. I, I could see like interactive art pieces um, where you didn't necessarily want to go into virtual reality but if you want to have, where somebody holds something and then either it guides you, the viewer, or you, the viewer, guide the work in some direction for some purpose or conclusion. I guess I considered maybe it was to teach um, disabled people how to do like a specific action. Um, physiotherapy. That's <laughs> cool. It's like you're actually using the tool, but you're not. Uh, I'm feeling like I'm stretching the wound. And it's, it's really impressive. You see the feeling, so you kind of you want to follow. Sort of like a vibration in my finger that was kind of going through my hand. You're, 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 you're getting through your, your move, your own move, through the process of uh, touching or, I don't know how to say it in English, but kind of gravel bois or toucher le bois. Or, or, on a vraiment le, le, the, the feeling of, of, of uh, touching. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>